well, to work on sustainable mobility, I would say be ambitious and be a bit crazy in the way you're looking at your city. We are inventing something new, so it means a bit of political uh, will and conviction, but, but what is coming next is, is really enthusiastic again. The transportation of people and goods account for nearly a fourth of global carbon dioxide emissions, making it one of the greatest challenges facing cities today. But it also presents a great opportunity for low-carbon urban development. Cities around the world have begun to recognize these opportunities and are busy transitioning from the current fossil fuel dependency to a future built on energy efficiency and renewable energy a shift that protects the planet while improving people's lives. Mobility, I think, is one of the most important as aspects that have an influence in climate change, in air quality, and especially in the quality of life of citizens. Yeah, Paris is very much engaged in the sustainable mobility program. I would say we have support another mobility, low carbon, less polluting uh, mobility, like with the things we did with the uh, Velib or Autolib, the electrical and, and, and bike sharing system we have, uh, and to reduce the individu individual uh, cars within the city. And all that policy together has like co-benefits right now on everyday life for the people. The role of the private sectors and the role of the cities of the future is extremely important. Actually, I have never felt before uh, to the extent that we as a private sector will be part of the solution. Sustainable urban mobility requires a mind shift, one where we move from carbon intensive modes of transport to more sustainable solutions like electric vehicles, car sharing, the expansion of bicycle and pedestrian lanes, as well as an overall shift from road to rail freight. 50% of all the trips that we do within the city are less than eight kilometers. And this is where the bike becomes very efficient for these shorter trips. And that's why we've increased our public bike system. We're increasing our bike lanes, our culture to have uh, responsible cyclists. Cities of the future will be much more dense. The streets will be much more narrow. And we, as a transport supplier, need to be able to fit into that with new technologies, new sizes of trucks and buses. And uh, for instance, going electric, as we are doing right now, means that nowadays you can actually have your bus stop inside the building that you live in. And you can, don't need to go out in the rain to wait for the bus. Where suitable, Bus Rapid Transit, or BRT, is another promising transport solution for cities. Here buses are given priority through a system of dedicated bus lanes, which enables them to avoid traffic congestion and thereby run more quickly and efficiently. The BRT system in Mexico City has really allowed us to include public transport in many of the, the busiest and more important streets in Mexico City. Because we know that the BRT lines have been so successful is that we are increasing our BRT lines. And something that is very interesting is that the city card for transport includes the BRT lines, the subway station, the electric system for public transport, but also our public bike system. They're all included within uh, this same card. The biggest challenges are how in mobility is how you change behavior. Um, after public policies, how you take people on board with you, how we all collectively accept that the, the world is changing, the way the city or are organized is changing, is, and that beyond the obvious action that a city must have, uh, citizens themselves also have to change the way they are looking their city and, and using that city and that's the condition to build a more sustainable um, place to live. Cities can't do this alone and are often dependent on the participation of their citizens. In this particular instance we aim to uh, encourage the communities to consider uh, alternative uh, means of transport such as cycling and uh, public transport such as uh, our Ariane bus. Uh, but then basically it is also to uh, relate the story that uh, we make it each and everybody's responsibility to reduce carbon emissions in the city. 
Adapting solutions to local conditions enables cities to provide transportation options to people in low-income areas, thereby setting off a whole chain of positive outcomes such as better access to services as well as the local job market. From an economic perspective, it's very much connected between transport growth and GDP growth. It's completely connected. We can make people grow, we can make cities grow, we can make business grow and countries grow, but with a reduced CO2 footprint. And that's where sustainable transport solutions is, where you can combine the economic sustainability, the environmental sustainability and the social sustainability. Stakeholder engagement is the key to success as we aim to significantly lower greenhouse gas emissions, particularly in the area of sustainable urban mobility. We need to see engagement at all levels and throughout society. Decision makers who dare to implement bold public policies, innovative companies that contribute to the creation of people-oriented, low-carbon solutions, and citizens who strongly support the development of attractive, sustainable places to live and work.